I'm Charles Landry. Hello, everybody. And I'm a co-founder of the Creative Bureaucracy Festival. Yeah, I'm Teresa Conrad, and I'm the festival director of the Creative Bureaucracy Festival. I think there are so many interesting people in the public sector that nobody knows about. People often think that it's all bureaucratic and boring, but that's not the case. And we believe we needed a forum for these people to come together. I learn uh, the more I talk to people and organizations around the world that this place just has not really existed before. And so we're receiving such a great feedback and response um, because this is a place that, that public servants really need it. I believe uh, that it's particularly important to have a festival on creative bureaucracy this year because we all see, I feel, right now and notice how important uh, creative bureaucracy is, how important it is to have imaginative uh, public servants trying to solve this very weird situation that we're in right now and that to have a space where they can connect and engage with one another, discuss these ideas, is maybe more important than it has been ever before. One of my favorite examples about creative bureaucracy uh, involves a man called Werner Fontius, uh, who worked at the Heidelberg Immigration Office, who used his discretionary effort in the 1990s when he allowed a young man and his family to immigrate uh, to Germany uh, from Bosnia. Um, this young man became a famous German author, Sascha Stanicic. Another example I like is Gabriela Gomez Mont, who ran the Laboratorio para la Ciudad in Mexico City. And she crowdsourced a constitution for Mexico City with rights and responsibilities. And that was really quite fascinating. With this COVID problem, needing to go digital was a real issue, but also an opportunity. We had to rethink how to do things, figure out lots of technical stuff. But on the other hand, we're hoping it's bringing in a much wider audience on the one hand, but it's also allowed us to connect with speakers from all over the world because one doesn't have to think about travel costs and time and so on. One of the big questions we're currently asking ourselves is what does a virtual festival actually look like? Right? Have you ever been to an, an online festival? Well, I have not, right? And so uh, we're, um, we're really trying hard to make this a worthwhile experience while not really knowing what we're doing. And uh, this is going to be a lot of trial and error. Um, and I just really, really hope uh, that people will enjoy attending this new kind of festival that we're trying to put together right now. You know, what am I hoping for in this year's festival? The main thing is, I hope it works. But also that I hope that people get something enriching from it and that there's a diversity of speakers and perspectives and so on. Anyway, I'm hoping that the digital festival is something that in the future we can blend in to a face-to-face -face event. Well, at the moment, I actually think that I'm really looking forward to a couple of days off right afterwards. Um, besides that, I'm really looking forward to have a probably more international and more diverse festival than it was ever possible when it was Berlin located. Um, I really look forward to using this year to get together a much greater uh, variety of people and a much bigger crowd. Uh, and allow them to, yeah, and have a very immersive experience of uh, discussing creative bureaucracy, what it looks like and what it could look like for an entire week. I think it's going to be very special.